Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and in today's Alex and Answer segment, we're going to be talking about Audi Quattro. This is a 2015 Audi Q5 with Quattro. If you want to know more about this vehicle, you'll find that video on my channel, so go ahead and subscribe down there at the bottom of this video, and you'll be able to find that on my channel. I get a surprising number of questions about Quattro. People want to know not only what it is, but how does it compare with other all-wheel drive systems out there. The most frequently asked question is how does this compare with Subaru's all-wheel drive system? Now the first thing to understand about Quattro is that it has become a marketing term, not an actual system by itself. So there are two different Quattro systems employed by Audi at this time. There's the transverse engine system that you'll find in the 2015 Audi A3 as well as the Audi TT. And a transverse engine system means that the engine is sitting across the engine bay right like that up front. Now that system is primarily front wheel drive and it can engage a clutch pack to send power to the rear. That's not what the Q5 uses. The Q5, the A4, the A6, the A8, the A7, etc. They all use this particular system. This system is basically the original Audi drivetrain concept. And what they basically did was they integrated the transmission and the transfer case together inside the same casing. And that's what you can see right here by the side profile of the Q5. It's the same thing with the A4, A6, A8, etc. And that is the somewhat front wheel drive looking proportions of the vehicle. If you take a look at a BMW or a Mercedes, the front wheel is typically pushed further forward in the car versus an Audi where the front wheel is pushed further back. Now, a lot of people incorrectly assume that that's because it's a front wheel drive based vehicle or a front wheel biased vehicle. That's not the case in these vehicles. This is really just a hallmark of the way the transmission and all wheel drive system are integrated. Because the all wheel drive system and the transmission are inside the same case, you cannot have the front wheels in front of the transmission like you can in an all wheel drive BMW or an all wheel drive Mercedes. Those vehicles, the drive shaft actually goes forward of the transmission and then it connects to the wheels up front. That's not what's going on here. We have the engine right up here in the nose of the Q5. Then we have the transmission. The transmission starts right about here in the vehicle or so. And the drive shaft comes out of that transmission casing just behind the torque converter. Now I realize I called it a transfer case earlier. In truth, this vehicle doesn't use one in the traditional sense. Now in a traditional four wheel drive vehicle, think of a pickup truck for instance, power is sent only to the rear wheels by default, and then you manually engage a part-time system which sends power to the front. And it does that by locking up a coupling unit inside a transfer case to send power to the front. That's not what's going on in the Quattro system. The Quattro system actually uses a true center differential. It's a torsion unit or a torque sensing unit. And all that really means to you is that this mechanical differential automatically sends more power to the rear than to the front under normal driving circumstances, but it is a true differential. Because this vehicle uses a true center differential, this is very different than what you'll find out there in most of the competition. Because just about every other entry out there uses a multi-plate clutch pack to send power either to the front wheels or to the rear wheels, depending on how that car is designed. So if you're taking a look at something like a Volvo, Cadillac, Lexus, etc., those are going to be front wheel drive primarily by default. I'm talking about the crossovers, not their sedans, of course. And then they will send power to the rears by engaging that multi-plate clutch pack. Something like a BMW does exactly the same thing, only it does it in reverse. It's normally sending power to the rear and engages the clutch pack to send power to the front. That's not going on in this system. This system is always sending power to both the front and the rear via that mechanical differential. Now will now will all of those <clears throat> now will all of those competitors will tell you that their multi-plate clutch pack is an all-time system and it's always sending power either front or rear. The truth is that the actual power split sent front and rear is typically very heavily weighted either front or rear depending on how the car was set up. So your BMWs, your Mercedes, they're going to be heavily weighted towards the rear, something like the Volvo, the Lexus, Cadillac, etc. Those are going to be heavily weighted to the front and again I'm talking about the crossovers there with the Lexus. The benefit to this style system is that if you're in a really slippery situation, say ice with water on top, this vehicle is always sending a relatively balanced amount of power front and rear. Now this particular driveline is set up with a rear wheel drive bias, but still the front wheels are receiving always at least 40% of the power in this vehicle. And that's really important because if you compare this to some of those other options, the front wheels might be receiving 5% of the power. So the rear wheels would slip and then you'd get more power up to the front. This vehicle is going to feel a little bit more sure-footed because the power is more appropriately balanced front and rear for a slippery situation like that. There of course is a disadvantage to a system like this and that's why you won't find a torsion center differential in something like a rock crawling pickup truck or a Jeep. And the reason for that is when a torsion center differential loses traction completely on one axle. So if both front wheels were spinning or both rear wheels were spinning, then the vehicle won't move because that one axle will be consuming all the power. 
Now, of course, in reality, that's not a situation that's likely to happen unless you are rock climbing somewhere and you get your front wheels completely off the ground and you needed your rear wheels to somehow power you out of that. Uh, it's difficult to imagine a situation like that necessarily, but it could happen. Of course, a vehicle like this that's modern, that does have stability and traction control, it will actually just break the wheels that are spinning freely like that and again help you regain control. But in a situation like that, it's not possible for this system to send 100% of the power to either axle. The comparison to Subaru is appropriate if you're talking about the five-speed automatic transmission and the older Legacy and older Outback with the 3.6 liter engine. Now only that particular combination used a torsen center differential and it was very similar in theme to this. The engine was entirely in front of the front axle, the center differential as well as the transmission were all integrated into the same case and the front axle came right out of the transmission casing. However, the modern crop of Subaru all-wheel drive systems that use a multi-plate clutch pack are not quite like this. Everything is still integrated into the same case, but they do not use a true center differential. Instead, they use a multi-plate clutch pack, pretty much like everybody else in the industry. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Go ahead and click on that banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos. Go ahead and find the video on this Q5 turbo diesel. You'll find that one on my channel as well. You can send your questions to alex at alexonautos.com. Find me over at facebook.com slash alexonautos, at Twitter as alexonautos as well, and I'll see you next week.